a few weeks ago, we looked at the, uh, the strap muscles of the neck, the superficial muscles of the neck. Um, and <laughs> probably about 10 years ago now, one of my first videos on YouTube was in Rhiannon painting the triangles of the neck on my neck. So what I wanted to do was more detail, basically, a visual guide to what get described as the triangles of the neck. They're anatomical landmarks. As, as with much of anatomy, it's part of the language that lets us describe where things are in the neck. The two main ones are the anterior and the posterior triangles of the neck. We'll do those two first because for most... Now for most people, the anterior and posterior triangles of the neck will be all you need, so we'll do those first. But each of those triangles gets broken down into other triangles, the anterior triangle four and the posterior triangle into two smaller triangles, which the maxillofacial surgeons tell me is not terribly useful for medical students. So we don't teach our medical students or our physician associate students this detail anymore. But if you're doing your surgery exams, it probably is useful. So I think the method should be, well, ideally, it would be good if, you'd already, if you already knew about these muscles, but we're gonna have to introduce the important ones to describe the boundaries of the triangles. We might see some things that are in those triangles, uh, and probably I should describe it and then try and draw it, like digitally, on the model, right? Okay, one muscle we've got to know about is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. That's the, the muscle you can see sticking out here. So it runs from the mastoid process down to the sternum and the clavicle, sternocleidomastoid. And then we need to look at the mandible. So the mandible really is the superior part of the neck. So we have the mandible, the sternocleidomastoid muscle, is the clavicle and the sternum down here. But then we need to just imagine a midline line. A line in the midline. And you've got your anterior triangle of your neck. So, here's, ooh, here's sternocleidomastoid. So the anterior triangle of the neck is bordered by the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, the line in the midline of the neck, and the inferior border of the mandible. And that triangle there is the anterior triangle of the neck. All right. Now the next muscle is trapezius. So trapezius, it's the muscle up here, right? The one you used to shrug your shoulders with. And we need trapezius, the clavicle, and sternocleidomastoid. And what we need is, it's, it's kind of a triangle, you need a bit more imagination for this one, but the anterior border of trapezius meets the middle third, so the superior part of the clavicle, the middle third of the clavicle, and then the lateral border of sternocleidomastoid and they kind of meet up here in the skull, although there's a little bit of occipital bone. That is the posterior triangle there of the neck. You're probably thinking, that's more lateral than posterior, and it is. But it's, if that one's anterior, that one's posterior. You know, so the posterior triangle of the neck. And we can see some other muscles in here. So we've got the deep muscles of the neck, we've got omohyoid, we've got the brachial plexus, we've got this the subclavian artery becoming the axillary artery. Uh, we'll find the accessory nerve in there. Whereas in the anterior triangle of the neck, well, you can see there's the laryngeal cartilages in there. There's the other strap muscles. We find the, the thyroid um, gland. And we find various blood vessels and bits and bobs, right? So the anterior triangle of the neck and the posterior triangle of the neck are next to each other, just separated by the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Now the anterior triangle of the neck is broken up into four other triangles on each side. Now if we take each one of those in turn, if we're looking at the anterior triangle, do you think you could guess where the carotid triangle is? Which part? 
would be the carotid triangle. Well, if I take off the sternocleidomastoid muscle, this muscle here is omohyoid. Omohyoid, so the hyoid bone is this floaty bone here. Omo refers to the shoulder. So the omohyoid muscle is a muscle that's running from the shoulder across here and then changes direction and runs up to the um, hyoid bone. Now if I put a sternocleidomastoid back on, the carotid triangle is, large, is there, right? That's largely it. So the posterior border is the anterior edge of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, as you would expect because it's in the anterior triangle. Its anterior border then is the posterior edge of this belly of the omohyoid muscle. And in there, we've got some major arteries. So in there, if I take that off, you can see we've got the common carotid artery becoming the internal and external carotid arteries. We've got the internal jugular vein. We've got the vagus nerve and so on in there. If I put the sternocleidomastoid muscle back on, most of those are hidden. But what, that's what the carotid triangle is. That's, that's where we're finding some of those blood vessels. Now, superiorly up, this is difficult to see, but up in here, we've got the digastric muscle and the stylohyoid muscle, both running to the hyoid bone. So those are like the, the superior, they're the top, the superior border of the carotid triangle. So you can kind of think hyoid bone, digastric, stylohyoid, that's the superior part. Bump, 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 so that's the triangle there. While we're up here looking at the digastric muscle. So if the digastric muscle is running to the chin, the chin gets referred to as mentum. Think of Rodin's the thinker, mental. Um, there's a submental triangle. So sub the chin, inferior to the chin. So where, oh, where the anterior belly of the digastric muscle runs to the chin, the medial edge of the anterior belly of the digastric muscle is the lateral border of the submental triangle. Uh, and that runs out to the hyoid. So the hyoid bone then is like the posterior border of the submental triangle. And then, so that forms like the, the, the base of the triangle. And then you've got to have that, put that med, imaginary midline back. The imaginary midline then is the medial border of the submental triangle. So we go from, uh, we follow the anterior belly of the digastric to the hyoid, hyoid bone, back up the midline to the mental, the midline part of the mandible here. That's the submental triangle. And even further, while we're looking at the digastric muscle, there is a digastric triangle, also known as a submandibular triangle. Uh, and that one is really difficult to see, but if we have an anterior and a posterior belly of the digastric muscle, so running from the chin to the hyoid, and then the posterior belly runs posteriorly this way, we've got stylohyoid there, and then we have the, <laughs> the inferior border of the mandible. The digastric triangle or submandibular triangle um, is formed by the anterior belly of digastric, the posterior belly of digastric, and then the inferior border of the mandible across here. Okay, that's three already. The fourth triangle within the anterior triangle of the neck kind of fills the space that's left and imagining it as a triangle does kind of stretch your imagination a little bit. It's called the omotracheal triangle or the muscular triangle or the infrahyoid triangle. This one then starts at the hyoid bone and I said that this was omohyoid. This is one of the bellies of omohyoid here and this is sternocleidomastoid. So here we start at the hyoid bone, run, so the lateral border then is this belly of omohyoid, and then this part of sternocleidomastoid down to the imaginary midline of the neck, and then back up the imaginary midline of the neck to the hyoid. So we go 
hyoid, omohyoid, sternocleidomastoid, midline of the neck. Yeah, that's still, that's still a triangle, kind of. Kind of. Right? I'm sure I can draw it as a triangle anyway. The posterior triangle of the neck, as I said, is split into two other triangles. The occipital triangle, which I guess makes sense because it's leading back towards the occipital side, and the omoclavicular, also known as supraclavicular triangle. Oh, omo, omo's back. So yeah, the omohyoid muscle is the one that's splitting this. So basically, there's the posterior triangle of the neck, and we can see this belly of the omohyoid muscle running through it. So this is the omoclavicular triangle, the omohyoid clavicle, and this part, the remainder, is the occipital triangle. So that means then the, the omoclavicular triangle is running from where the clavicle meets trapezius, following the belly of omohyoid to sternocleidomastoid, and then sternocleidomastoid is forming the medial border down to the clavicle, the clavicle is forming the inferior border, so we're going clavicle, omohyoid, sternocleidomastoid, clavicle, omohyoid, sternocleidomastoid, right? And the occipital triangle then is running, so the inferior border would be this belly of omohyoid to the anterior edge of trapezius, up to the occipital bone here, and then back down with the posterior border or the lateral border of sternocleidomastoid back to the omohyoid muscle. So omohyoid, trapezius, bone, sternocleidomastoid, omohyoid, trapezius, bone, sternocleidomastoid. Okay, you get it. So that's it. Those are the triangles of the neck. Like I say, some textbooks don't go beyond anterior and posterior triangles of the neck anymore, um, but they can be very useful. I mean, obviously, if you're a surgeon, dissecting in this region you use these structures to guide you and guide you as to what you expect to find and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, anterior triangle has got four smaller triangles within it. Posterior triangle has got two smaller triangles within it and that's mirrored on both sides. And we have this imaginary midline helping us make the triangles. Okay, all right. See you, uh, wow, see you in a few weeks actually, because I'm going to have a couple of weeks off for Christmas. <laughs>